We are gonna have a lot of fun today. We're gonna put on these monsters. 35, 12, 50, 18s, and we're gonna put it on that. Welcome back Epic Cars, and today we are gonna be doing a fun project on the 2005 Excursion. And look at all the goodies that are fixing to go on it. So why am I installing all this stuff? Well, essentially, I just wanted it to look cooler. It's not necessarily anything regarding performance or anything like that. I don't go off-roading in this vehicle. Uh, this is my work truck. This is my vehicle that I take on long trips, towing trips, things like that. And I just wanted, again, to keep it as dependable as possible. But you gotta, you gotta upgrade the looks, right? Uh, now, I did go ahead and get E-rated tires because I still tow with this vehicle. Uh, I still, you know, there's a lot of weight. This, this excursion, gross vehicle weight on the excursion alone with the diesel engine is 9,200 pounds. And I've got probably another six to 700 in tools and things like that in this vehicle at any given time. So I'm pushing, you know, 10,000 pounds. So I, gotta, I had to make sure I had good high rated uh, weight tires. I'm just going with a, a four inch mild lift putting some 35s on it. I didn't want to have to redo the drive shaft angles and the rear axle angles and things like that. I didn't want to affect my towing. Don't want it really high to where I've got to have this huge extended hitch down in the back uh, for uh, hooking up to a trailer. And again, I just wanted it to be cool. I wanted to have a little bit more off-road capabilities if I get into a mud situation and so forth. And obviously with these Toyo RTs, they're kind of a hybrid ATMT tire. Now I wanna go into a little bit more on this package. So I've got the wheels and tire combo. What's great about this is this came from customoffsets.com. And what you can do is you can go in there and you can put your vehicle in, put the lift that you're wanting to put on, put all the different variables in there and they automatically figure out what your offset should be on your backspacing for your wheels. And also, you know, what tires fit, what kind of modifications are gonna be required. They even, you know, they tell you on the website whether or not that they, you know, you got to extend the fenders and put on fender flares, things like that. And so I went on and put all the data in about my excursion and said, this is what I'm going to be doing to it. And they kind of custom made, quote unquote, custom offsets, uh, these wheels. They made sure that they were the right size tires uh, and wheel set package for the excursion. They also include all of the accessories. So you've got anything to do with you know lug nuts, locking lug nuts, any of the, uh, the, the little badges and things like that that go on it. It's all included in one price and it came to me just like this, fully wrapped, delivered by a truck. I went down to the front, got it with my tractor and that tire was actually on top and it was all self-contained, came here, no damage, so awesome custom offsets. The other thing I did was while I was on the custom offset site, they actually had a lift uh, kit system for the 2005 excursion. And this, this is the zone off-road system that I went ahead and bought through custom offsets. Now, I got the four inch system, I got the replacement springs for the front, I've got the blocks for the back, I got all new shocks, I've got the adjustable track bar, I even got the, uh, the extended sway bar links that you're gonna need when you're putting a lift on that excursion. So guys, I've gone ahead and pulled the excursion in the shop, and what I'm gonna do is actually put on the lift on the ground. I've got the lifts, as you guys know, uh, but my lift is rated for about 9,000 pounds, and, which is quite a bit for a four-post lift. And I've had the excursion on the four-post lift before, but it's one of those deals where with the 9,200 weight of this vehicle and all my tools and things like that, like I said, I'm pushing about 10,000 pounds. And I've noticed when I pull it on the lift, and I've done work on it before, it just it just makes me nervous because I hear this creaking and it's just like it's growling. The lift is just you know hunkered down and trying to support all that weight. And to me, it's not worth uh, being unsafe to put this on the lift today and work on this. The other reason why I'm doing that is because obviously not everybody has lifts, and so I wanted to show that you could do this on the ground, you know, out front in your driveway or in your garage and uh, it's a fairly easy process, I think. I haven't done it yet. Essentially what I'm gonna do is start on the back first. The back is typically the easier process because all we're doing is adding blocks to the back. The front's a little bit harder because you got the adjustable track bar and the other couple of components. Also, you're actually adding an entire set of leaf springs to the front leaves. So it's a little bit more involved up there. I'm gonna go ahead and start in the back, kind of get the hang of things, kind of get into my rhythm 
and uh, get a little dirty and this the back is a lot easier to do go ahead and get the back tires on then I'm gonna move to the front whenever I'm changing parts out on any kind of vehicle I like to weigh them so I've got the uh, stock wheel and tire combo on my scale and it is 68.3 all right got the new big boys on there and wow 111.2 so going to a 35 inch tire with an 18 inch wheel uh, versus the 16 inch wheel and probably I don't know about a 30 inch tire maybe 31 inch tire significant weight increase this is not what you want to happen letting the truck down and the uh, truck is pivoting towards me I'm actually holding it up with my shoulder as I'm trying to raise this back up again uh, this ain't good okay that sucked uh, you can Hopefully I can leave. Yeah. Look what happened to my jack stand. Because I've got it fully extended, it pivoted on me. So I don't know if you can see that, but it actually started coming towards me because the jack stand is fully extended. That's one of the things I was a little worried about when I was doing this is my jack stands are kind of short and see how far up you have to extend. So you're basically just on one last lug and sure enough, it started to move. So the entire truck, whenever I let go, sorry guys, with having knee surgery, it's tough to get up. Um, when I let down the jack, the entire truck went this way. Now, again, it wasn't, you know, it, I, I wasn't in any danger because I wasn't underneath it, but it's just one thing to really pay attention to when you're, when you're lifting a vehicle is make sure you've got the right stuff. So obviously I don't have my jack stand set up correctly for this. I'm gonna have to come up with something differently to prevent it from moving this way whenever I let that jack down. Okay guys, so I got the uh, jacks and everything kind of reconfigured. So I lowered the, uh, the extenders down on the jack stands. Have another jack up here just for safety. And then I moved the, um, the jack that I had on the axle back to support the rear hitch. So I've got support there and I've got support there. Now you can see that the axle is in full what droop, uh, it's full drop. So it's all the way extended down based on its own weight. Makes it a lot easier to get to these U-bolt um, nuts. I also have to take off the uh, shock. So I feel pretty safe about this setup right now. Still a little sketchy. Uh, I just, I need bigger, uh, I need bigger jack stands. Uh, so that's one of the weaknesses I've identified during this project is get bigger jack stands. Now what I did was I went ahead and undid three of the four. I left the fourth one just a little bit still intact because when I took this whole thing down, obviously that's what's holding your axle onto your leaf springs. Now this is gonna drop down. The only thing really holding on now is the shock, which it will support a little bit, but this is a lot of weight, guys. And so I wanted to see kind of where, where this was gonna go, if it was gonna shift back, shift forward. And sure enough, when I let that slack out, the, the axle started to shift backwards. So now I'm gonna put a jack underneath the axle tube right there and just support it a little bit, or a piece of wood or something like that that's got enough uh, thickness to it. And then go ahead and let off that final nut for that U-bolt. This goes around the bottom of the axle and holds it up comes through this bracket right there and holds the axle onto the leaf spring. Now what we're gonna be switching out today is that block right there. Obviously that is a, a spacer block, so if you put a bigger block in there, you're gonna get, you're gonna push that axle further down towards the ground, which then raises the back end of your truck. So essentially, I don't know, that looks maybe, I don't know, two, two and a half inch block. So to be able to get four inches, uh, we're gonna put at least, a, at least a four inch block on that, maybe even a little larger. Okay guys, I got the one side done. Moment of truth. Let's 
get this big old thing on the wheel. Come on, baby. All right, they're on. Now, I gotta get the lug nuts that they included, and we'll set this thing back down on the ground. Well, you should see a tire on right now, as I was just showing you in the last uh, cut. The custom offset sent me the wrong lug nuts. They're supposed to be 14 by one and a half acorns, and they sent me 14 by two. I don't know if you can see that right there. So, uh, they are closed, it's on the weekend. They've got, they sent me, uh, what, 28 or so of these, and then they sent me, um, let's see, it looks like eight of w the wheel locks. Those are 14 by twos also, and those are 14 by twos. So, they're the wrong size. I, they just will not go on, uh, obviously, the 14 one and a half. I called O'Reilly and they have uh, about 40 of them, or actually had about 26 of them in stock, and he was gonna order some more and they'd be there this afternoon. So I'm gonna go up there, buy those, and obviously I'll get a hold of custom offsets in the morning and let them know that uh, they sent me the wrong stuff and they need to give me some money back because I had to go buy some other ones. All right, guys, so the age-old question, will they fit when you get a new uh, wheel and tire combo? I have not lifted the front of this excursion yet. I have lifted the back, but I have not lifted the front yet. Thought I'd go ahead and throw on the 35s with the new wheel and tire combo and just see if it fits. Right now, it looks pretty good, but we'll do the turn test, and let's just see if it hits the fender at any point. Okay, that's full lock at the other direction, and there is no rubbing. Obviously, it did hit that inner uh, fender well right there. I think probably whenever I was pulling it back out, I felt something, so I think it got, got caught on that piece right there as it was turning out. Let me look at the inside. I do not see any rubbing, but I'm not looking close. Yeah, so uh, good thing, good news here is also it is not rubbing on this leaf spring. I don't see it hitting anything else uh, inside the body or inside the frame. So the old question of will it fit? Yeah, it, I think it would fit. I mean, obviously you couldn't go full uh, lock turning right, but pretty cool that it fits. So we're going to add a little four inches to this thing and it should fit great. I'll tell you one thing I'm definitely investing in, I, you know, I, I, you kind of get spoiled when you have uh, lifts and things like that. My ground game is not as good as it, it needs to be. Uh, I've got really small, cheap uh, jack stands, and I've got a bunch of jacks, but they're just little bitty jacks. I need to get some bigger stuff, so I need to go ahead and make an investment into a really good jack and a really good jack stand. I just don't feel comfortable. I've had the jacks and the jack stands fail on me a couple of times during this entire project. In fact, I mean, it fell on my arm, fell on my shoulder, and luckily I'm okay. But um, man, it's just safety is so paramount, especially with a vehicle this size and this big. So what I've done is I've got a jack stand at the front, a jack stand right there on the transmission cross member, and I put the uh, stock tire down and it's being supported by the metal bracket on the running board. Now that's not a structural piece, but it's it's good enough to hold the weight. And more importantly, if something were to slip, that jack stand right there, 
where that jack stand right there were to slip, at least it's gonna be coming down on something. It's actually resting on the tire right now. And if I was underneath this thing, it would give me enough room to get out. The first thing they want you to do on this entire uh, kit, as far as the instructions are concerned, is remove the track arm right there. The second instructions actually says to remove the uh, pitman arm, uh, but I'm not putting on a different pitman arm, so I'm not gonna be doing that procedure. And then the third thing is to remove and install the new sway bar uh, links right there. What I've gone ahead and done is hit all of the bolts that I'm going to be, or the nuts and bolts that I'm going to be uh, putting torque on with some penetrating oil. So anything to do with the U-bolts down there, uh, the track bar and the sway bars I've hit. And that way when I get to them, they're nice and loosened up and it's going to make this job a lot easier. All right, I got the driver's side done. The uh, new shock new u-bolts the new leaf pack that goes on underneath the existing two leaf springs and the new uh, sway bar links the only thing i did not change out so far is this track bar and uh, mainly because i just don't have a, a impact driver uh, nut that's big enough i think that's like a 27 millimeter if i remember right and i just don't have that one i've got every other i got big ones as far as sae but i just don't have going that big in uh, millimeter so one thing they did talk about in the uh, instructions is you have to bend this tab down for your brake lines uh, just to give it a little bit extra slack. So I've, I've made sure we've got enough slack, no problem there. And then at full droop, uh, this vent tube for your axle gets a little bit tight when you're having to drop the axle all the way down to work on, uh, to insert the leaf pack. But uh, got that all done, It's everything's all torqued to spec and Ready to go. Now I just gotta do it again on the other side. Day two on this lift, and you can tell by that sigh, this isn't any fun anymore. Um, my excursion basically tried to kill me at least three times. Now, it's not the excursion's fault. Sorry, excursion. And mom and dad called her Goldie, so. Goldie, I'm sorry. You didn't try to kill me. It was really the jack stands the jacks and this little stupid piece look how dirty i am literally i mean you should see the my legs um i've been rolling around on the ground this little piece right here is what's been doing it so essentially this uh, bolt goes in the bottom of the leaf spring pack so the new leaf spring packs about like that thick let me get a little closer here so you can see it New leaf string pack is uh, about that thick, and then the other two are about that thick. Well, I could never get this thing to line up, and as you could tell from the way it's bent, it has just fought me tooth and nail. Whenever I released the tension off of the uh, first lip, leaf spring uh, bolt and released the shock and everything associated, the axle actually went for, like moved forward and so whenever I put the new bolt in, obviously it was kind of going in at an angle like that because the front axle that should have been back here was actually kind of back like that. And uh, then that just started a whole sequence of events of me trying to push it with my tractor and I mean, then it fell on me. So. I don't give up easily. And I'm not even giving up, but got to go to the store anyways and get a new screw, new bolt. So I'll try again tomorrow. You're dirty. You have no idea. I was coming to make sure you weren't trapped under your car. What's that? This is the bane of my existence. It's kind of bent up. And stripped. So you have to get another one? I've been fighting this for four hours. That's why I don't like mechanics. Finally got it all done. Got it all lined up. Was screwing it down. I should have stopped right there. But I went go, I went through and it went <laughs> came all thing. apart. That thing fell on me again. Are you kidding me? Why is there not you need things under it? I got it. it. it it's fine.
this is actually the first time I've had it on the road and kind of at high speed. I'm going about 65 miles an hour right now. And I've got to tell you, the ride quality to me is better. And I think there's two reasons why. First and foremost, the uh, new shocks. I think those are definitely uh, helping the overall ride quality. But probably the most is the, the air pressure in the tires. The Michelin tires on the stock wheels, they were at about, about 45 to 50 PSI. That's what they recommended keeping those at. I would jack it down to, you know, 40 to 45 just from a ride quality standpoint. Well, I went around this morning and checked all the air pressure and all the tires, and I'm sitting around 32 to 33-ish with these new tires, which is the recommended range. I think they say up to about 35. Now, if you're towing, it does say that you can take them up to 40 to 45. Uh, because remember these are e-rated tires so if i was towing a heavy load i can definitely raise the air pressure so to me uh that's probably the reason why the ride quality is so much better is it's just got it's just got you know more cushion from the uh, rubber and the sidewall because it doesn't have a lot of air pressure in it it's a bigger tire uh it's this it's this e-rated tire so it's the same thing as that michelin uh, but uh, maybe it's a softer compound, I don't know, but obviously I've got a lot more flex in the sidewall because this is a lot taller tire. So overall, in, in I would say right now it is a much better ride. Now stability wise, I would say it's much better. Guys, I'm doing, like I said, about 65 miles an hour and prior to switching out the suspension and tires, the excursion tended to wander quite a bit and that's kind of a problem with excursions that I've heard on some of the uh, forums out there is man the steering inputs terrible so all these guys rebuild their uh, power steering box and that kind of stuff and I was thinking I was probably gonna have to do the same thing but now with this lift and new tire combo it feels really good it feels really planted now for example I'm going around the curve now at 65 miles an hour 70 miles an hour and driving no hands and see if I can do this. This is a pretty big curve right here. Yep, no hands, no problem. And I feel comfortable doing that. Because this is my work truck, I know that's kind of a, a, a weird way to gauge uh, drivability, but because this is kind of my work vehicle, I end up eating a lot in the vehicle when I'm on a trip and things like that. And so eating with two hands while you're driving down the road is kind of you know, a lot easier than with one. And so I end up driving with my knee quite a bit. Right now I'm driving with my knee. I've been driving this whole time with my knee. And like I said, we're still going about 70 miles an hour. And guys, I'm just from the way it was before to the way it is now, it is so much more controlled. I feel so much safer driving with my knee. Whereas before, and it was, it was not dangerous, but it was, you know, something I wouldn't do for this long, like I've been doing now. I would definitely have a hand on the wheel to kind of give it some input going at these speeds, especially around corners and so forth. So much better. It tracks so much straighter, which is, which is interesting to me because I did not, I have yet to put on the new adjustable track bar uh, because I just didn't have the right socket to do that. So I'm still going to put that on, but as of right now, Man, it feels like it doesn't need it. It's tracking very nice. So overall, it's a great uh, upgrade to your truck. If you're curious about how it affects drivability, I love it. I love sitting up a little bit higher. I'm having to kind of get used to getting in and out. It's quite a bit higher than it used to be, uh, but I really enjoy it and it looks really good. Fairly easy project. I probably made it more hard on myself uh, than it should have been just because I messed up in a couple of areas. But other than that, I mean, I think this is definitely a four to six hour project if you have the right tools. And uh, I would recommend doing it if I were you. So guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned, I've got a, a special uh, message about the Honor Crew at the end of this uh, video. And it tells you a little bit about this great organization that I support and hopefully you can too. Guys, I wanna tell you about a special organization that I support. So thank you for sticking around at the end of the video. The Honor Crew. I put the sticker on my excursion for a reason. I wear the t-shirt and I wear the hat for a reason. The gentleman that runs it, John Fuller, is a good friend of mine and he takes this real seriously. Not only is he for God, he's for country, and he's for the service members who protect us. And so what the Honor Crew is, or the, is all about, is about deployed service members helping out their families, their spouses, and so forth. When they're deployed overseas or even in the U.S., somewhere other than their local residence, and something comes up. Washing machine goes bad, fence falls down, toilet needs repair, roof needs some uh, looking at. Maybe they just need some advice on getting something done, some work done around the house. 
that's where the Honor Crew steps up. You can go to their website, honorcrew.org. You can get reach out on Facebook, uh, The Honor Crew, and then on Instagram, also The Honor Crew. Whether you're just donating time, whether you're just giving support, you know, moral support for John and the crew and, and everybody out there that's doing this for those individuals, or obviously donations, uh, anything, anything helps. It's a very small organization. John and the volunteers do a lot of this uh, just on their own dime. Maybe you're a tradesman, you know, you're local to Oklahoma City and you've got the ability to help out. Plumbing, electrical, uh, painting, things like that. And you want to give back to the individuals that protect us and give us the freedoms that they do each and every day. Well, let us sacrifice for them. Uh, let us, and as the, uh, the logo says, you protect so we serve. So that's what the Honor Crew is about. Now here's a cool little uh, news story that was done on John and the Honor Crew. Thanks for watching. God bless. Take care. Metro Man is showing the families of deployed loved ones that they aren't alone. If they need jobs done around the house, he'll step into duty with energy that is hard to contain, as we learn in our Red Dirt Diaries. I mean, are you going to take yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, can I go? go? John Fuller is always on the move. Okay, I'm not always... Well, I am always like this. Uh, we had a hard time getting him to stay still. <laughs> I know, guys. Wendy, where is it? It was just a guy. can't do this to them. Here it is. Here's one. Okay, I hope I'm doing this okay for you guys. I want you to take a look at this. He was looking for this pamphlet about the machine milling company he owned. He's always been handy. Now he's retired. Okay, I was going to put up another building in Edmond and build hot rods. I mean muscle cars, not necessarily hot rods. Muscle cars. That plan stalled out after Fuller loaded up his 81 Ford pickup. So I went over to her house, I put in some receptacles, the TV. When the Edmund man found out the woman's husband was deployed overseas, he did the work for free. So I walked out there and thinking, man, there's a need for this. So that day, I decided to start the honor crew. That's been about two years ago. The honor crew is now up to six members. Uh, we do a lot of lawn work. We've replaced several storm doors. Okay, we've installed washers and dryers. It'll just take a few minutes. And right next door, the Navy vet put up Christmas lights. Okay, what am I going to do now? Fuller thinks the honor crew has done work for more than two dozen families with loved ones deployed. Just that, you wouldn't believe the looks on these people's face when you do something for them and, and, I know, and you don't charge them. It's savings, but more importantly, it's security. It's everything. Yeah. It's great. It's very comforting. Neighbor Ryan Farquhar's husband is deployed right now. We had Mr. John to call for everything, and he's always there. And if he can't be there right then, he'll be there when he can. <laughs> it's been fun. I enjoy it, and I enjoy what the results are. We're going to post a link to his Facebook page, the Honor Crew Facebook page. Oh, you, you, can donate, you, know, <laughs> you can donate to John, his yeah. cause, and so uh, right. they install refrigerators. I mean, they, they, they do everything. So, Mr. Oh, John. Great. Mr. John Fuller, way to we go.